Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make plant-based vegan cottage pie. Delicious and comforting. Here we go. Not too hard. Normally I do this first, is put the potatoes on to boil. Organic potatoes <laughs> come in all shapes and forms. And last but not least, our love potato, our heart potato. Bye bye. Ooh. There we go. These are going to go in a pan, which I will then fill with water and bring to the boil and cook for about 20 minutes, 25, 20 minutes, cold water. And we'll have a Mm. teaspoon of salt. First we're going to chop an onion, which I've already chopped this one. I like to use olive oil, put that on a medium, medium heat and put the first chopped onion in. Strong organic onions. Two cloves of garlic. Finely cooked garlic in with the onions. A couple of mushrooms. These ones from organic mushrooms from a local source. I scrubbed these organic carrots. Prefer not to peel things if I can. They're quite fresh, quite young. Vitamin B12 actually comes from bacteria, microbact microzorial bacteria that live in the soil, the cows that eat the grass and the mud with it, that then go on to have vitamin B12 in their bodies. So there's a little bit of soil left on there, just a little bit. I like to think that that's putting some extra vitamin B in my body. Let's have some cabbage. Another vegetable from my organic vegetable box. Very nice it is too. So we'll give that a little rinse. Actually, it's pretty clean. These are the inner leaves, so they're all very nice. Rather nice raw, this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cottage pie, you can use whatever vegetables you happen to have in your fridge. As I said, these are all from my organic vegetable box, so they're all local, locally grown. A little bit of lovely broccoli. Had this for, it's uh, November now, and we've had this for a good few weeks. This lovely 
broccoli, very popular in my family. The green vegetables are full of all the B bits. Very good and important for the vegan plant-based diet. We'll put that on uh, 180. Slicing the stem right up to the top florets there. And that can go in. To find my dish, chop up the rest of the broccoli stem to go in my wormery. It's a bit tough. This is the bit that's a bit brown on the outside. And the worms will be able to make it into compost and soil more easily if it's chopped. And I'll add that with the, the carrot ends. I am putting the onions in today. Sometimes I don't put the onions and the garlic in because the worms don't like too much of it. I'll get these in my uh, paper bags that the organic vegetables are delivered in. And I'll just shred those up and add those into the wormery as well. Potato water is just coming to boil now, so I'm going to turn that down so that the water doesn't boil out. So put the vegetables away. A little bit of bouillon stock, stock powder, gluten-free as it happens. This is um, vegan. A couple of teaspoons of this ready-made stock. You can make your own, of course. Then we'll add one heaped, two heaped teaspoons of mixed herbs. Uh, look, I've got these tiny little homegrown chilies. I think we'll, we'll put those in. We did have bigger ones earlier on in the year, and I have got some big ones at the end of the garden, but this is a, a plant that's decided it's going to make lots of tiny little baby ones. So I'm just taking off the green stems. This just gives a little kick, the flavour. And then we're going to add the passata. This one happens to be a basil and oregano passata. And as always, I'm going to put a little bit of water in the bottle, pop the lid on and get the rest of it so that nothing goes to waste. Now this one, I'm also going to add some green lentils which I will strain. I just use my hand but of course you can use a sieve. And we'll pop those in on top of the passata. And just a little bit because I do like it, my frozen meat free mince plant pioneers. Just about that much, there we go. That's going to be plenty. So we'll stir that in and leave this to cook through until while the potatoes are boiling. Put the tin can in the recycling. In fact, I'm actually going to save this tin can. I'm going to wash this tin can and I've been making little ladybird homes out of upcycled toilet rolls and rolled up pieces of paper and they're going to fit in here. They can go in the garden, but they need a waterproof protector. So this is going to be our waterproof protector. So welcome back. It's been about 20 minutes. The potatoes are done and the sauce is cooked down very nicely. Just a splosh of red wine vinegar and just a little splosh of soy sauce. Remember, we did add stock already. And then a good couple of rings and freshly ground black pepper. Very warming, very good for the body. I'm going to leave that now off the heat. So potatoes, if you have a look here, you can see this one. The skin is curling away from the potato, which is a good sign that it's cooked. Pick it up and, oh, and there was I thinking they were nearly done. Do you know what? I am going to leave them for just another, I'm going to give them a bit more blast for about three more minutes. But while we're waiting, we'll put the base, the, the tomato sauce in the bottom of our dish. So, I may have cooked a little bit too much, but we shall see. We can have as much as we, we like. We can always save some for pasta sauce or dish. So I'm actually just gonna pour it in there now, actually. supposed to slip off the knife you see when they're ready still wait a little bit longer the potatoes are finally ready so we'll pour them into a colander now I sometimes 
I sometimes retain a little bit of water, but actually, because it's because they're a little bit muddy, I'm not going to retain water that time. Um, extra milk. Now for adding uh, margarine or butter, I'm going to add pure vegan margarine, plant-based margarine, and a good generous splash of oat milk. So I'll get mashing. Getting there. Now, if you've made your base too watery, um, when you put the mashed potato on, it can weigh it down and um, the potato can sink. As I said, we, we like the skins in our family. We like we don't mind. I don't mind. I've just got so used to having potato skins in mashed potato. I know you can. It doesn't look as clean and white and as full of goodness. So we'll get all that out. Okay, we'll get a fork and go over the top. We'll go this way today. We can go the other way. Now some people sprinkle cheese on, I usually just do it just like that, but as I do have Angevita yeast flakes, they're a sort of cheesy nutty thing and I'm just going to sting and I'm just going to sprinkle some on, um, obviously you can't see the marks anymore. Oh, in it goes. And uh, let's give it 20 minutes. The pie is cooked, it's been in there for 25 minutes and it is bronzed nicely. Little bit of bubbling of the sauce at the edges, but uh, never mind, it still tastes nice. Put it on the table. Let's see how it tastes. 